EcoTrust work. I've been asked in the comments by several people about EcoTrust and the popular YouTube channel Build It With Rob. There's some excellent videos on there about loft conversions and they have a product called EcoTrust. So as you can see here we have a truss rafter roof. These are timber trusses and they span from one side of the building over this side the front elevation to the rear elevation and if you want to have a look at a previous video I've explained in there how a usual loft conversion works. Basically what we need to do is to take out these triangulated areas here and turn it into a clear span. So with this system you can see it here what EcoTrust do is they insert a what's called a cold rolled steel member next to the bottom cord of the truss. So you can see here on the left what a truss looks like before the steel is installed. You have quite a slim timber section at the bottom and that's mainly in tension because of how the truss works. Whereas these here, these rafters on an angle here are in compression and also they're trying to bend because of the weight of the roof on it. What EcoTrust do is they slide these steel members in next to the bottom cord and that's now going to form the floor. Um, so you can see here that it's made out of folded sheet metal which is a very economical way to manufacture something like this. So we'll just have a look at it end on. So you can see it there that it's created out of a C section and at the end it's been cut and shaped to the rafter. So once it's slid in, so basically what they do is they put up scaffolding on, on this side and they take up part of the roof so that they can slide these in. This is then slid in and then we're going to get another one on the other side as well. So this is sandwiching the, the truss in between and that's done for each and every truss. So obviously there's a lot of steel here um, and that's quite interesting because really if you look top down here then it's only the center portion that actually needs a new floor because of the additional load that you're going to be putting on it the this triangular area here at the eaves is probably only going to be used for very light storage because there's no headroom in there let's have a look then at how this works so they insert this steel member in here and then they bolt up another c-section up against the rafter. Now as far as I can see the only reason for having this particular cut here is because what they want to do is extend that. So let's just extend this now. And if we do that we can see that it's sliding past there and it's probably going to go along sort of to about there and then they'll probably bolt through at this point here so you can see why this has been cut back. Now that's excellent I would say in terms of uh, bolting this on there and triangulating the structure where this is a little bit weak is because we've got this hole here and the wall is under this point here so the, the largest amount of shear stress is going straight through this web at this point where they've weakened it with that hole. So one recommendation possibly I would give to EcoTrust is to leave that hole out. These holes I presume are here because they allow for services to pass through so they're, they're a good idea. I would just question whether it's a good idea to put one on the end. Having said that I've not analysed it so I'm not saying it is a problem by any means. So having bolted that in they place these C-sections 
at each side of the sloping rafter and that then continues all the way up to the top. And I haven't been able from the videos to see how they bolt it together at the top, but I presume they do so. Um, and I would suggest that it's essential for them to connect this new rafter with the next one. So at the point of the roof where we're going to want some flat ceiling here, they've got a collar tie or a ceiling tie going across and I assume that's just bolted through here. So that's basically it for the strengthening work. So once that's been done, the triangulation can be cut out and we're left with this. Now before they do that, uh, according to the videos, they insert in here, somewhere in here, the stud work. And as far as I can tell, that's not particularly load bearing. All that is, is it creates a line for the plasterboard so that you've got a closed eaves here, which makes for a cleaner room. So in terms of the structural strength of this system, it's, uh, it's an excellent idea. Basically all they're doing is creating beams from the front to the rear elevation. There should usually be no problem with the slight extra weight of a loft conversion on the front and rear walls of your property because bear in mind that the, the that these walls have been designed to support the, the load of this long span truss in the first place. Um, what this is doing is providing additional stiffness and support for the new floor that's going to be going on there. The other thing that's good is that we're getting triangulation here. So we've now got a new bottom cord, we've got a new top cord going down both sides. Presumably they have bolted it together here, here and here. So it's forming a triangle structure. Um, and there's no real reason to assume that these rafters uh, can't now span all the way from here to the ridge uh, because the steel sections really are uh, strong and stiff, particularly if they've got the timber sandwich between them. Now the third thing I want to draw attention to uh, that's good about this system, we can see if we take a section here through the floor beams. So you can see here that the that there's an I beam created. So we have effectively a top flange, we have a bottom flange, we have a web, and then we've got the timber sandwich between. Now what this timber does now, rather than being a load bearing element, is it stops this beam from buckling sideways. So that makes it an incredibly strong shape in terms of bending resistance. In terms of stiffness, uh, it's absolutely ideal that you've got all this steel material at the bottom and all this steel material at the top, uh, which makes for a high stiffness. So I would say that this particular system is going to be particularly good in terms of you not feeling any real bounce when you're walking across it uh, and having a high capaci load capacity. Um, but of course, that depends on the calculations being done for for this particular beam. Now this is manufactured out of steel sheet. Uh, you can see here I've drawn it about two millimeters thick and I imagine that these are about 150 millimeters deep or something like that. They're manufactured out of sheet steel, hopefully they're galvanized. Now one of the issues here, if we just take the section away, is that They've taken away all of the top flange here, which makes it rather weak at the bearing point. Now, as long as they've got calculations to support that that is, is all right at that point, then, then that's fine. Um, it would be much better really structurally if that top flange carried on a bit further up here. But I totally understand if it can't do so because you've got the other rafter coming in and meeting it at that point. The other potential issue here is that given that this steel is going right up to the edge of the building and right up to the top of the rafter, 
this is what's going to be a cold edge because the insulation is is inboard of that so we're going to get potentially what's called cold bridging uh, and potentially some moisture build up um, at the point of where where it's cut and what's of potential interest to me is that um, while the sheet is galvanized when when they buy it and fold it um, after it's cut I imagine the edges here are not galvanized anymore um, again I could be wrong and again it could be no issue but I thought it would be worth just pointing that out so let's summarize the pros and cons of the Ecos Trust system as I see it first of all the benefits I'm a massive fan of off-site manufacture. I think that's a fantastic benefit of this system. It means that they come along and they measure your property. They go away and they manufacture it in a factory, in a control environment. Uh, these steel sections, it's going to be measured and folded and cut, probably all done by CNC, that's computer numerical controlled manufacture. So the holes will be laser cut, it will be cut to length by machine. So it's going to be very accurate and all the labour is done in a factory environment. So what it means is that it's going to be very quick to install. There's going to be less time on site, which is particularly important given that this is going to be your home. So I think those two are the biggest benefits, the off-site manufacturer and the related benefit which is that it's very quick to install and it's going to be very accurate there's going to be a good finish i think i suspect there's going to be very little deflection or bounce on that floor because there's simply so much steel being being thrown at this and the fourth benefit is that there's going to be very little mess because there's going to be no access as such through your house it's all done off of scaffolding and in in the roof space itself so here are some possible downsides. That's just because I want to balance everything out. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying that this, these are going to be particularly an issue, but these may be the possible potential downsides of the Ecotrust system if you're comparing it with something else. So number one, it's probably not going to be the most economical solution. And that's because the sheer amount of steel that is going to be installed with this system having said that the cold what we call cold rolled steel sections are an economical way of manufacturing steel sections and they're very lightweight um, but compared with a timber loft conversion it's probably not the most economical solution but you have to balance that obviously with the speed of construction. There's going to be removal and reinstatement of roof tiles, felt and battens. Whereas if you have a traditional traditional loft conversion, it's all going to be done within the loft space. There's possibly going to have to be a hole created in the wall to get a steel in or two steels in. But the integrity of the roof itself is not going to be compromised necessarily. Whereas with this system, it, they have to take off the first few lines of tiles so that they can s slide the steels in. I think there's potentially going to be more potential for cold bridging than with timber. Now cold bridging is where the cold side of the roof, which is the outer side of the roof by the tiles, that cold obviously hits the out outer edge of the C-section steel, but the other edge of the c-section is on the inside of the property which is the warm side so we call that cold bridging sometimes with cold bridging what you get is moisture build up because the moisture from within you know if you're breathing within the room within your roof space then the moisture in the air is going to condense against the cold surface that it meets so there's more potential possibly for cold bridging them with timber because timber doesn't transmit the cold as steel does. A bedroom loft conversion might require additional trays at first floor. So I don't know whether Ecotrust also do staircases and renovation in your first floor of your building, which would be probably required if you had a bedroom conversion. 
So a structural checklist to bear in mind is you're going to have to get building control approval with this or any other system. If you don't get building control approval for a structural uh, alteration to your home, then when you come to sell your home, you might be in trouble and it might stop the sale going through while they find, find a way of retrospectively approving the structure. So make sure you get that done. Secondly, calculations might be required for your specific property. Often firms who have system build products have got approval for the product, but we need to then join up the dots between that approval and the calculations they've done for the product and for the specific spans and loads of your pro property. So with this system, it's always worth asking whether they have got calculations for your specific property. Um, and I assume that they do do so because they will need something in order to get building control approval. What improvements could they make? Just a suggestion is that they put insulation between the steel sections and the cold roof. So you're looking at as these two sections are clamped over the sloping rafter that they leave a bit of a gap at the top and they slide some insulation in there so that we don't get the cold bridging. Um, I believe it's also good practice to leave a 25 millimeter space for airflow um, which would go over the top of the insulation between and it would be a 25 millimeter gap between the insulation and the felt and the other possible improvement is to truncate the rafters short of the eaves again to avoid the cold bridging and to avoid possible moisture build up at the eaves structure improvements nothing really it's the weakest point might be that hole at the bearing if that hole isn't needed i would suggest to eco trust why not just eliminate that i've put here in the second bullet point that it's probably overkill. I think probably the amount of steel they're using is well in excess of what they need to use, which is a good thing because the lightweight C sections are economical in the first place. Um, if you were to go a timber route, you might see some economy, but then obviously it's not going to be built in a factory and it's going to take a longer time to install it. So overall, a big thumbs up for the EcoTrust system and for the great videos they put out. If there's anything else you want me to cover or look at or any questions, then please leave a comment below.